spend any time in the woods and you know there's a lot more here than meets the eye. Sometimes you just got to take a closer look. Lichens are among our best biological indicators. They tell you a lot about the health of the forest. Tonight we'll take a closer look at lichens. Nine million acres of forest, 1,700 miles of continuous shoreline, 4,300 lakes, 12,000 miles of streams, more than 300 waterfalls, 15 counties, two time zones, and one area code. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula. Welcome to 906 Outdoors. Nine oh six Outdoors is brought to you by Cooking Wild Seasonings. Make it fresh, make it yours. They're all around us. We've seen them, but maybe never really taken a close look. A closer look. Even closer. What are they and what can they tell us about the health of our forest and our air? I met up with ecologist Ryan Rutherford and found out there's a lot more to lichens than meets the eye. So we're going to look at some lichens today. Lichens are a conglomerate organism that contain a, a fungus, an algae, and a cyanobacteria all within the same organism. So what we're looking at right here is, is dragonfoot lichen, also known as Labaria pulmonaria. It's one of our most special lichens in the UP. We have probably over 800 different species, and this is certainly one of our showiest. So you can see it's really ad adapted at, at catching rainfall, snowfall, and then what it's going to do is it's going to just kind of me slowly melt, and this allows the um, lichen to be metabolically active, even when it's a little bit below freezing outside. The lichen can actually be active during these temperatures. A few really amazing things about this one in particular is uh, since it does have cyanobacteria, you know, it can take nitrogen out of the, the air and literally fertilize the, the forest. About half the nitrogen from the forest is, is coming from this one lichen, and this is a, a related one here. This, this one's also uh, mostly in, in older forests, old, old growth, but also some well-managed second growth they can persist in. A lot of the time, it's dormant. What you see right here, it's, it's nice and, and bright green. We, we have a little bit of snow melt going on, which, is, which allows it to kind of spring to life here. So even though it's a little bit below freezing, uh, it, it's, it's active right now. And the fact that there's, there's no leaves on the trees allows the sunlight to filter down here and allows the, the lichens to, to thrive, even though we might consider you know, this kind of the, the off season or the dormant season for, for most other life forms. But it's actually a great time for lichens. If you look closer on here, you have different kinds of lichens too. So we have some, some green shield lichen here. Uh, this one right here is a, particular, is a, is a dust lichen. So it's, it's very different ecologically. This uh, lungwort is adapted to, to, to pick up rain snow melt so i can spray it and it's gonna immediately you can even see it turn turn greener as i as, as i do that in just a few seconds it's taken up that that moisture and it allows it to be metabolically active so this part of the tree is going to get all of the the runoff so this is a much moister habitat than the, the back side of the of the tree here so if we look at this side of the maple uh, you can see that this is actually covered with, with lichens here too these little white dots right here all of these are little, are little crustose lichens. This is a totally different habitat than the other side and allows different lichen species to occur here. So on, on one uh, tree like this, you might, you, you might have 20 or more different kinds of, of lichens right here. Um, this one right here, this is a stubble lichen. And a lot of these are only in really old forests, so they're really good lichens to monitor. They tell you a lot about the, the health of the forest. Yeah, so lichens are among our best biological indicators. They tell you a lot about a particular site's uh, temperature, um, humidity, uh, the, the chemistry of a particular spot what, where they're at, and are among the, the best thing for foresters to, to monitor. I mean, they, they tell you an, an, an awful lot if, if the forest is, is well managed. Um, so in general, where you have ab abundant lichens is where you, you have your most pristine in environments. And the fact that we have so many in the EP is really a testament uh, to simply how unspoiled uh, this, this region still is. Uh, so this lichen in, uh, right here, this lungwort lichen, used to occur throughout southern Michigan, southern Wisconsin, uh, since the Industrial Revolution. It's pretty much been totally uh, extirpated, I mean, just, just from deteriorating air quality, but it still occurs in abundance here. This, this same lichen also occurred throughout much of Europe, too, uh, before the Industrial Revolution, but now it's extremely rare there as well. So we're really lucky to, to have it. it. It tells us so much about 
about our, our air. I mean, you, you, re you really can't see air, so things like uh, lichens um, uh, tell us what's in the, the, the air without even being able to, to, really, to really see it or test it in other ways. 9060 Doors is brought to you in part by Blades Bait and Tackle, your hard water connection to Little Baby Knock. All right, so here we have some rock lichens, very different from the, from the tree lichens. This kind here is called Rock Shield. The genus begins with an Exantho-Parmelia, and it's pretty much only on rock. There's several different species. And this one prefers a uh, rock that's open to the full sun. So we have a nice uh, south-facing uh, opening here along the uh, river, so it's really good habitat for that one too. If you look closer, there's a few um, smaller ones here. This is a kind of map lichen, a, a rhizocarpon. You might look at this and easily dismiss it. It's not very conspicuous. Uh, the really amazing thing about it is simply how long uh, these guys can live. So there's one species up on the Arctic called the yellow map lichen uh, that's been found to live over 8,000 years. They grow just fractions of, of a millimeter per year. And a lot of the lichen is actually inside of the rock. So the little fungal hyphae on the bottom of the lichen can penetrate between the crystals and the rocks several millimeters deep. They've been found up to 16 millimeters deep, so there's really no distinguishing this lichen from the rock. And uh, lichens have an amazing uh, chemistry too. They produce acids that help break down the substrate to provide nutrients for the lichen. With the xanthoparmelia here, they get this color from a kind of acid called, called uh, oozenic acid, and it protects it from ultraviolet light. So you, you kind of see this, this color lichen, you can pretty well assume that it's got oozenic acid in there. And particular lichens that are exposed to full sunlight uh, will produce that particular kind of acid. So when you look at, uh, at rocks covered in lichens, what's really amazing is you have a whole bunch of different habitats, even on the same rock. So, so the, the, the top versus the sides. And even uh, underneath, this is one of the uh, types of, of gold dust lichen. This one is only underneath overhangs that gets no direct influence from rain. So it's only on slopes that are greater than 90 degrees and it can only absorb water through humid air. If I spray water on it, it'll just kind of beat up and eventually fall off. It can only get water through humidity, through really humid air, and that's all the moisture that it needs is just from the air. Lichens on conifers like this spruce here are very different uh, than those on hardwood. So with conifers, you often have uh, rainfall towards the, the, the outer edge. So that's where a lot of the uh, lichens are, particularly on dead branches. This is oak moss lichen. Avernia mesomorpha, it's really abundant on conifers. It's, it's really spongy. It, it also has that same lime green color. So it also has uh, oozenic acid in it. Uh, so this is an, an uh, oozenia lichen here. This uh, particular one prefers to, to grow on conifers, but there's a few dozen species uh, in the country. And it's of prominent wildlife importance too. Uh, birds will use it for nesting, particularly in northern Perulas. A uh, pretty important one too in, in parts of the world. So it's been used for, for thousands of, of years and it's said to, to have all kinds of, of medicinal properties. But it's mostly used as an, as an antibiotic. It's a sign of really high moisture, humid environment. So here in the northern UP, you see it along river courses like the Sturgeon River right here. It's, it's really abundant. If you look at the structure, it, it has a central cord and branches that kind of radiate out from that. This is called curly horsetail, Equicetum scarpoides. You usually see it growing along rivers on evergreen. But really interesting, the stems actually contain glass. I mean, you, you can even file your, your finger with it. It's easier with, with the larger ones, but even a small one like that is pretty neat. So you get different kinds of lichens growing on different kinds of trees. So conifers and hardwoods are different kinds, but even within those groups, you, you, you have different um, species. So on this cedar, we have uh, surprise lichen here, Basidia shingwaldzii, that pretty much only grows on, on cedars, at, at least in this region. And it's on this one, we can see uh, the main reproductive structure, which are these black dots here. They're called the apothecia, and that's where the spores are produced. So these produce fungal spores that'll be uh, released out into the atmosphere. And if they land on the right algae, they can form a, a new lichen. So that's one, met, one mode that they can reproduce. So some lichens are pretty generalized in their preferences. Uh, so what we have here is, is green shield lichen, and this will grow on conifers, hardwood, rock. It's really generalized in, in its preferences and also has a pretty set growth rate. So it'll grow about five mil millimeters per year. So a patch like this, and it might be a decade or more old, but you can age the lichen by the size of the, of the patch. It's your most common green lichen that, that we have on trees. <laughs> Nine oh six oh doors is brought to you in part by Crist, your Northwoods neighborhood store. So 
So what we have here are one of the jelly lichens. So I mentioned that uh, lichens can form a bond uh, between a fungus and an algae, but also a fungus and a cyanobacteria. So this is one that has cyanobacteria in it. And you can tell because of the darker color. So other lichens, they might be grayish or greenish or, or orange, but this has a really dark, almost black color. And that's from the cyanobacteria. And the species of cyanobacteria in here, is, it's very moisture loving. So you tend to only find these jelly lichens in places that are really, really moist, like right next to this waterfall. So this one right here is, is called sea storm lichen. And it's called that because the edges almost look, look like waves. They, they, they look like breaking waves. And um, it's on really old trees, but also uh, uh, shaded rock walls, just like this one here. So you can see the edges, they kind of have this powdery stuff on, on the edge uh, that are called ceridia that can break off or be wiped off and then end up growing into a, to a new lichen. But it's a really spectacular one that you find growing on shaded rock walls. This one's Citralia olivatorum. So this is kind of a, a rare old growth forest specialist too. This, this is called tree flute lichen, many gazia. And if you look at it really closely, you can see it. It's got little pores on it, just like the holes on a flute. Thus its name. It's really a beautiful lichen that um, prefers very shaded, uh, humid environments. So this one here is it's pretty common. It, it's called bitter wart lichen, and it's really strange among lichens in that it actually has a, a taste. And it's got a bitter, it's got a really bitter taste to it. It's, it's kind of a, a pleasant bitter. It's not, it's not bad, but that's a, kind of an odd way to identify that lichen. Uh, so this is a kind of, of moss here. It's called Hylocomnium splendens, or, or stair step moss. So if you look at it, you can see it sends out these little ledges of foliage and every year it'll, it'll send out a, a new ledge. So this would have been from last year, one, two, three, four, five. This, one, this one's probably about five or six years old, just this little strand. And it can form these mats here on the floor of the, of the forest, particularly under conifers and boreal forests. And this is also one that's able to fix nitrogen out of the atmosphere and deliver it to the uh, soil. So this is a type of pelt lichen here, the genus uh, Peltigera. Uh, you can see that it's got this, this uh, very um, brownish color. This is from the cyanobacteria that, that lives inside of it. And what's really neat about it is the underside has these little structures. They're called risings. They're root-like structures that they kind of look like little brooms and they'll, and they'll grab onto to the substrate. So in this case, it's, it's grabbing onto the moss, it's grabbing onto the rock and allows it to kind of to kind of cover the substrate. And this is another one that's it's really abundant in, uh, in really humid microclimates. If you look at that lime green lichen, that's a kind of lichen called rock ramolina. It's a little bushy lichen that pretty much only grows on very dry rock faces. And it can cover some pretty large expanses of rock and it occurs where there's very little moisture. So this is the Sturgeon River quartzite here. It's between 2.2 uh, and 2.3 billion years old. Ancient, ancient quartzite. And what we have here is really large uh, rock crystals and one lichen that prefers that habitat is this lichen here, just spectacular. It's, it's called moon glow lichen, Dimelina oriana. And in, in my lichen study, I found this is the only one that prefers very large crystal size. And on these quartzite outcrops, it's by far the dominant lichen. So this is a type of crustose lichen, meaning that the, the lower part of it is embedded into the substrate. So there's parts of this lichen that extend down into that rock, likely several millimeters in, in really hard quartzite, one of our, one of our, our hardest rocks, which is really, pretty amazing and patches like this are going to be growing at just fractions of a millimeter per year. So these are going to be uh, decades if not centuries old some some of these individual patches of, of lichens on this quartzite. The halo that you see around it's the actual growing part so it's done growing in the middle it's it's growing towards the outside like I said just fractions of a millimeter per year really slow growth rate. So here's a really nice selection of, of ground lichens uh, here so these are really um, ecologically Im important. Uh, about 8% of the Earth's surface is covered with ground lichens and, and actually a few of these kinds here are, are some of, of our dominant ones. This gray one here, this is called the, the gray reindeer lichen and this is common in sterile openings, rocky sandy openings throughout the, the UP with abundant sunlight. But there's also really abundant up on the Arctic tundra. This makes up about 90% of the diet of caribou up on the, the Arctic. Ground lichens are really important for wildlife here too. There, there are, we have deer that eat lichens, uh, the least chipmunk, our smallest chipmunk species. Uh, eats lichen, uh, flying squirrels, um, and of course a lot of birds will use them for, for nesting too. And these are also really ecologically important too because they're able to keep moisture down in the soil. So they, they form a nice crust over the surface and they can dr dry out. But even if they're dry, you can look underneath and that soil is still going to be nice and moist. So what we're seeing is this lichen ground cover community is insulating that soil layer. And this also allows other uh, tree species and, and shrubs to grow here too. So it stabilizes the soil, it allows soil to develop and then you get things like, like trees, like this, this Juneberry tree 
growing here. We got a few blueberry bushes, a, a red pine, a white pine, and these lichens are able to kind of start that process, the process referred to as succession, by which you get an, an open area without any vegetation, slowly gets colonized, and the lichens play a really important role in that process. Today's show is brought to you in part by Rapid River Knife Works, home of Michigan's largest custom knife factory showroom. I stopped in at Race Driven in Escanaba for a look at the latest in off-road bikes. I'm Dwight, I'm from Race Driven, and uh, here I got the Gas Gas 2023 Factory Edition 450, and I got the 2023 KTM Factory Edition. Um, these bikes over our other bikes are our newer bikes that we have in stock. Um, these are the new years for 2023 and 2024. Um, the factory bikes, they come with a lot of extra parts that you don't find on a lot of the regular bikes like the MCs and the XEs. These come with a full Ar Arcapovic exhaust on them. They come with the Hinson billet clutch cover. These are all factory OEM race bikes. They come with the anodized orange triple trees up top. They got aftermarket hubs, hub guards. They run our exact WP forks, also WP rear shock. These bikes also feature the factory edition graphics, which is new for this year, the Red Bull KTM. And then also on the Gas Gas, we have the Troy Lee Design Gas Gas Red Bull. These both come with the gripper style seats on them. These also feature the new chassis for 2023, new aluminum subframe, the newer 450 motor. We also have the same chassis that have the 250 motor inside of them. They come with skid plate, full graphics, rear hub, aftermarket KTM, anodized orange and then also on the gas gas we have the anodized blue hubs on those as cells as well these bikes also come with the dirt star wheels instead of the factory oem wheels so there's just a lot of upgrades in general that you can get for these they also feature a new mapping new suspension setup settings you get your bang for your buck out of these ones the 450 in these years they do feature the new shorter stroke 450 instead of like the last year so they do wind up a little faster they also have like i said have the new mapping to them so you can also choose a more subtle, you know, riding style, or if you're out on the track and you want to get into it a little bit more, you can actually go to the more aggressive style tune in the mapping. These also offer our new trash control setup, which is good for launch control. And they also feature a better quick shift setting now. So you get the quick shift for motocross tracks. These come with a whole shot device right from the factory. So these are ready right out of the box. You can get it right down to the racetrack and you're ready to race. This is called toad skin lichen right here. Lasalia papulosa. It's called that because the thallus has a whole bunch of little bumps on it, just like a toad skin. And unlike the other, a lot of the other lichens on, on the rocks, it doesn't get water from runoff. It gets water directly from rain. So you spray it, you see that it immediately changes color. So as I spray it, that outer layer, that outer layer of fungus becomes translucent, allowing that inner algal layer uh, to be able to get exposure to the sunlight to photosynthesize and produce uh, sugars for the lichen to consume. So it, so now this part's metabolically active in just, in just a second. I mean, just spraying a little bit of water on it is, is all that it takes. So this is a, a rock tripe lichen. It's called Umbilicaria mammulata. And this rock wall is just covered with it. So this lichen is adapted at picking up runoff that's coming over the surface of the rock. And it has this rather felty black lower cortex and it's kind of like a sponge. It wicks up that moisture as it comes off the surface of the, of the rock. And this lichen is uh, actually uh, edible. During the, the Revolutionary War, uh, George Washington fed his troops at Valley Forge and allowed them to survive the winter there. They call these umbilicate lichens because they have an umbilical cord-like structure that allows them to stay hardly fastened to the rock. It's also our, our largest lichen. So these patches, you know, you, you, you might have a few here, four or five inches. There's some in, in the area that are a, a foot across or, or more, just a single lichen. So you often might think of lichens as something really small and hard to see. This is one that's, that's quite obvious and, and quite showy if you're in the, in the right spot. This is an example of a dry rock face community. So this is mostly covered with rock ramelina, ramelina intermedia, this little this little bushy one, this little lime green bushy one is very abundant here, right there. There's also a, a rare fern here called the, the fragrant cliff fern, Dropterus fragrans, and it's, its dead fronds are right here. This is listed as special concern in Michigan and, and it actually does have, have, have a nice fragrant smell to it. Uh, it's really easy to uh, identify based on that and it's pretty much only on dry cliff faces that are very low in nutrients, so quartzite or, or granite, volcanic rocks sometimes, but it's a pretty special fern indeed. And it, this is a fern that grows all the way up into the Arctic Circle, too, on, on acidic rock outcrops. It's, it, it's right at the southern limit of its range here. It doesn't go much further south. 
than this, and it's pretty, pretty neat when you find it. And we're on a, a north-facing slope here, so this is a site that doesn't get any direct sunlight, so this is a, a dry, cool microclimate that we're in. This differs from the cliffs that have a lot of rock tripe on them because this one does not get a lot of runoff from uh, rainwater and, and groundwater. This, this stays pretty dry, so it's a different hum humidity. Mo a lot of the moisture here comes in the form of, of humidity. So this canyon stays pretty humid. These lichens can, can persist. So as my mentor has written, uh, Erwin Brodo, lichens are the essence of wildness. To find them in abundance is to find a corner of the universe that's still pure and unspoiled. And I think that's exactly what we have here in the UP. We just have amazing lichen diversity. And it's uh, just a testament to, to how uh, wonderful the, the UP still is here to, to, to have all this. It's been wiped out from so much of the planet. It's easy to take it for, for granted because, you know, they're, they're small and they're, they're inconspicuous. But when you really uh, uh, learn about them, you, you learn to appreciate them and really learn to appreciate just how uh, unique our little corner of the world is. I hope you've all enjoyed learning about lichens and now are able to see your environment in a little bit different way. It's just amazing how much diversity there is around us, particularly here in the UP when you have uh, rock outcrops and streams and old, old growth forests and conifer swamps and just so many different amazing habitats. And every one offers something a little bit different if you're willing to take a closer look at it. So thanks for, uh, for tagging along today and I hope you've learned something interesting. Feel free to join us on Facebook or visit us at 906outdoors.com. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get on the 906 Outdoors email list. We'll send you an occasional email with tips, recipes, and more. You'll also be eligible for giveaways just for being on the list. Thanks for watching, and we invite you to join us next week for another adventure right here on 906 Outdoors. Outdoors.